what's going on family man look it's about to be a real good ride man i said before i got something good for y'all coming this ain't even what i was talking about but this here is going to be fire bro we're going to take it from new orleans to la to back to new orleans to big boy records the beginning we ain't go, we ain't even get into the music this is the straight street side we ain't got to get into the music i don't know if we're going to get into that most likely it's going to come to that but i've been putting this together for a while and it's funny because um oh man what happened to my lighter it's funny because what what how this shit started or how this came about how this came about a hater put this on my mind whatever but even though he a hater he made me think about that i said you know what he right I want to put my, my, my people out here. So I've been putting this together. And I'm going to start with my nigga, my right hand man. But we go going to take this long journey. Because yeah, it's a big boy shirt. It's hot as fuck out here. But I said, this is, I, I, this is the only one I could find. It's long sleeve. But I said it's fitting for this introduction. And uh, this is the intro of Big Boy Records to start the street side. And, and this go come with a lot of parts to it. Like I said, from New Orleans to L.A. to back to New Orleans. And we're going to start from the street side. From New Orleans, I'm going to start with my nigga, Big G Slim. That was my right-hand man. I was his right-hand man. That was my nigga. You saw him. You saw me. That's just what it was. I mean, we was neck and neck. If something was happening, you better believe we was there. That's my dude. Now, he basically was raised with Chuck. And um, we go start with his story, OG G Slim. And trust me when I tell you it's an interesting story because he's from the third world, but then he went to LA and they come back. Now let me clear this up about this. When I say, and them they was Crips, East Side Photos Gangsta Crips, and um, the real ones. I'm a, I say the real ones because, rest in peace, I remember him saying this, he from the night walk. He said, Man, I remember them Chris come in the neighborhood and we had to run them out, man. They called themselves trying to sell crack. I said, Ronnie, I believe you, but these ain't the same dudes. See, that's another story that might get told during this journey. These ain't the same dudes. The niggas that was a part of the... It's in the big boy records, however you want to put it. The mid... When they came back to New Orleans or when some of them came back, the rest of them was from L.A., they just came down here with them just to visit. Them niggas don't get money shit. One nigga, one, none of them dudes banging here. And they had too much money to be trying to take over a corner. The niggas you talking about was somebody else. But we ain't gonna get into that now. But yeah, that might have happened because I didn't hear that story a buku times. And I'm like, wait a minute. I know who that was. It ain't like I don't know who that was. I know who you talking about. Two different entities. That's a long story. But... We gonna get into that. And there's a lot of people that's gonna be a part of this journey. A lot of people that I didn't ran across, I didn't met. Cause see, underneath that umbrella, it was a lot of different crews. The main crews was the dudes from the East Side Photo Gangsta them. But then you had dudes around them. You had people from New Orleans. You had people from, you know, from Uptown. You had people from the Cali. You had G Slim, who from the Magnolia. OG G Slim, not the rapper. The only part about this that could be about the rapping part is G Slim that could be in this. Because the rest of them, this is the street side, you know. And um, and trust me when I tell you, it's interesting as hell. Because, you know, I done ran across a lot of them, man. Um, Lil Blue. Been around him. He from L.A. He ain't from New Orleans. He Lil Blue. Um, Wacky Low. Because see, back then... I didn't speak to too many people. We all was under the same umbrella, so we know we all was family in a sense. But the main family, you know, the main thing was protect the bag. You know, that was Chuck. And that's the homie and shit like that. But then you had all these different people that was a part of the stuff. I didn't ran across them. And honestly, I've been around pretty much all of them. A lot of them, I can't remember. A lot of them probably don't remember me because, number one, I didn't speak a lot. It was only a few I was too real cool with. And the rest of them we just talk amongst each other when we around each other. Stuff like that. Or we got to do business or whatever. However it goes. But, you know, the ones I was like 
cool cool with Dirty. Everybody like Dirty Harry. Chuck little brother. That was my dude dude. For LA. Wacky Low. That was my nip. When Wacky Low was down here in New Orleans, when he was down here, man, Slim had to watch us too. Um, he stopped a lot of work from being put in between us two, man. Back there late, because that, that was my dude. But we're going to talk about all this, man. And a lot of New Orleans have a big part of it. It's not just LA. This stuff play a big part in the stuff that happened in New Orleans, too, that you don't even know about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we talking about from Warren Mays. We talking about from, you know, dudes that was kind of Chuck out the Cali, yo, Caesar. Um, I didn't, you know, been a, well, I didn't, I didn't ran across Caesar before I even met Chuck. I met Chuck through Slim. Um, he was tight with Caesar. You know, it's a lot of, it's so many parts to this, the street side. And I've been putting this together for a minute. It's so many parts to this, that this shit stretched from the third to the east to the west bank. I don't know about Metairie and Kenner, but from to the West Bank, Algiers, Christopher Horn, Uptown, Magnolia, 13th, the East. Hey man, it was a big umbrella. It was a big umbrella, but I'm gonna kick this off with OGG Slim. You will hear from him, and he got a lot of shit to say. And then it gonna be a lot of other parts coming, and this shit gonna start making sense. Then it go eventually venture off to the start of big boy but right now we just focus on all the street side from new orleans to la so take this ride for those who you know it's, it, it, for those who just want to nigga this is gonna be a ride bro this is gonna be a ride and i'm gonna try to hit y'all back to back with this ride but if y'all see that video if y'all see the video click on that video Get the notifications, but that shit gonna be fire within itself. You know, just the beginning of part one. That shit gonna be fire within itself to take this journey, man, and learn the real atmosphere around the Big Bug Records before Big Bug Records. Other people like G, like Big G Slim and other people and stuff like that. You know, people from Houston and LA, people that at home, um, that, that that down with that with that with that gangster moving car. Um, the gangster moving car, like all in Houston, all in Mississippi, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, on to a multi-million dollar company. Multi-million dollar company. Big Boy Records, locally now. And if you don't know what Big Boy Records is, it's the founder of Mystical, founder of G Slim, founder of Ghetto Twins, founder of Fiend, founder of shit. God damn, the founder of all kind of people, man. Um, drama, squad, um, Black Menace. Shout out to J Dog. Me and him was doing that, y'all. Y'all know me and Jesus. J Dog put me in, had put me into that um with that MCA shit with his crazy ass. Shout out to my nigga Threat from Black Menace. That's my dude. Um, we gonna get into this ride, y'all. Stick around, baby. Stick around.